I can get them to you. I just don't understand why you need them. Are you concerned about her estate or how it was handled? No, sir. I, nothing like that. I just want to see him. Amy's the one you got to talk to. I, I, I mean, I, I don't have any of it. I, I don't have any cash. Oh, I spoke to Amy. She came by to see me. You see, she's what they call professional. And you're what they call can't win for losing. Well, <laughs> you're not Grams, are you? Creative-wise, it started because I <clears throat> I had just moved to Austin and uh, uh, freaked out a little bit about living in a house because I'd never lived in a house. I'd always lived in an apartment and there are all these different doors, you know, when you live in a house, versus, when you live in an apartment versus a house. And uh, when I just had a house and I just had one door, I was just like, this is just a door. Anybody could knock this down. So it, that got me started thinking about home invasions and the kind of the terror involved with that and how scary it actually is. So um, it, it all started from there. If you want the money, you can have it. It's, a, it's about um, a young man named James who's gotten out of, uh, gotten kicked out of college. And he, he, he arrives at home. And his grandmother passes away almost immediately. Um, we learn that he doesn't have any family beyond his grandmother. And uh, so he's just lost a little bit. And then we have uh, a con man in jail who at the same time is working a scam called the Grandparents Scam, where he calls grandparents, old, old sounding names in the phone book and just says, they're, says grandma, grandpa. And the grandparent generally then responds with the actual name of the grandchild. And then they're able to con them out of money, get them to wire some money. So our con man's in jail, James gets out of school, Con man gets out of jail and has a big debt that he has to pay back. And he ends up trying to scam old marks of his, and one of them was James's grandmother. So he starts calling James's house, saying that he's James. And so James becomes a little obsessed with trying to figure out who this guy is, and then they collide rather violently about halfway through the film. And that's where it takes a very significant uh, Genre. I have a tendency to, to, to give very long titles to my, my scripts and my films, and so when I said two-step to my producers, they immediately jumped on it and were like, yep, yeah, let's do two-step. Um, but, it's, you know, so I figured there's a pair, there are all these pairings in the film. There's Dot, Dot, the character of Dot and James, there's James and Webb, there's Webb and Dwayne, there's Webb and, and Amy. Um, so, it, it seemed like it, it sort of worked. <laughs> Most of what I've done is comedy, and um, but it was very important to me that when the violence happened in the film, that it resonated, that it really hurt. It did what violence is supposed to do. You're not supposed to necessarily enjoy it. Um, and for that to really, one way to do that, especially in a low budget film, is make you care about the characters. Um, so every blow feels 10 times worse when you care about the characters. So I tried to create a world that you, where you cared about everybody and you didn't want anything bad to happen to them. You know, even the bad guy a little bit. You, you know, we tried to make him as human as possible, even as, as bad as he is, you know, as, as kind of, he's a pretty bad guy. <laughs> but, uh, but he has faults and he, and he has his own demons that, that plague him, so. We started talking to uh, James Landry Bear, who's who played him. And, you know, he really wanted him to have some human faults, which is great, and, and I agree. Um, it was just difficult, at, you know, at the beginning, because I really wanted him to be such a badass, but then we found a way to kind of uh, weave it in. But um, he's, a, he's a firecracker, he's a loose cannon, he, he, he'd go off at any time, but at the same time, he's got a lot of uh, pressure from on high in terms of what he's supposed to be providing. So, you know, you wonder if he would be as horrible as he is if he didn't have, if he wasn't in that situation. And I think there's a lot of pairings between his character and, and the boy and James. I mean, you know, they're both sort of lost. They both don't really have anybody but themselves. And it's really, you know, and I want you to kind of wonder which way James might go in the future by the end of the film.
you know, like it's quite possible he could go into the direction of a web mm. down the road. Our character, Dot, who's played by Beth Broderick, she's really the, the human thread throughout the film, but even her storyline is pretty flawed. I mean, you think that she's this, she's this kind of nice character that, 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 that takes James, the character James in, um, but she's, you find out she's having an affair and she's not necessarily the most perfect person. But um, but people aren't. So even a, even a even a what is supposed to be a reflection of humanity, I wanted it to, that to be flawed as well. You know, so the bad guys the bad guys are human, and the good guys have some not so great traits. And there's just a lot of great Texan characters. I mean, we 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 decided to keep our casting local because just in Austin and in Texas in general, there's a lot of production, there's a lot of acting, there's a lot of local people that are great. And uh, I knew that if, if any of this kind of very Texas analogy heavy dialogue seems unreal, it was good, the whole thing would fall apart. So we went with a local casting director and who's famous for getting like great little character actors to do little, little moments in films. She, she, did, uh, she does Linklater's films and she did uh, Friday Night Lights. And, um, and so we just really, struck gold with, with people playing the small parts. There's, um, and it worked. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, it's, so it's, a, it's a character driven piece, but then it also has the bloody revenge thriller element as well. So there's something for everybody. Bring the whole family. We had a wonderful sound design company called Sonic Magic in Los Angeles, um, who had done much bigger films than ours. And we had an opportunity to show them, to show them the film and I didn't think they were gonna, we would be, it would be affordable, but they literally just said, what do you have? And we told them, and they said, great, we'll do it. But we should be out domestically, I mean, domestically in the US, in North America, US and Canada, um, I think by March of 2015. And then we're trying here, in different markets here in Europe. So hopefully um, sometime after that, it'll, it'll be available to people. So yeah, that's what I'm doing.